What is going on my fellow navigators and welcome back to another question and answer video where I, Pokenav, answer the questions sent in by the community. I wanted to make this video today guys really for two reasons. One, to obviously answer questions that members of the community have sent in, but also to let you guys know that this will be the last video that I'm going to release in this fashion. Now don't fret. This isn't the end of the question and answer sessions. In fact, they are only going to get better. And the reason we're no longer going to have these particular videos is you guys might have noticed that we are now at over 800 subscribers here on the channel. And first and foremost, I got to thank you guys so much for your support. Thank you so much. I mean, this community has been growing like crazy over the last couple of weeks. I, I really can't believe at the propensity in which it has been growing. And so I have to give you guys a big thank you for being part of the community and continuing to support the content that I'm putting out. But with that being said, as I've told you guys before, when we hit 1000 subscribers, I'm going to start doing the live streams. And those live streams are mainly going to be question and answer sessions where we can interact in real time and you know i can answer as many questions as i possibly can during those sessions and realistically um, at the growth rate that we're currently experiencing we should hit a thousand subscribers probably within the next week and a half definitely by the end of the month so as of now i've really just been honing in on uh, cultivating the live stream, making sure that everything is good to go so that when we do hit 1000 subscribers, I'll be sure to let you guys know on YouTube. I'll go ahead and put out a bulletin letting you know when those live streams will be. More than likely, um, they'll be near the end of the week, maybe on a Friday afternoon. We'll just kind of have to play it by ear and find a time that the majority of the community is available and so we'll just kind of mess around with it in the beginning find a good time that works for everyone uh, but i'll be sure to let you guys know and as i said before when we hit that thousand subscriber mark i'll have a lot more capability so i'll be able to put out those bulletins let you guys know when the live streams will be and honestly i'm super excited to do it guys i, I can't wait to do these live streams i think they're going to be a lot of fun i think it will be great to interact with all of you in real time and, and ultimately try to answer more questions because have you as you've seen from these previous videos in the past we can usually only get to maybe two or three questions well i have a tendency to go pretty in depth when maybe i <laughs> I, I don't have to uh, but i want to make sure i answer questions fully and concisely um, but we can only get to a few questions per episode so with that being said, this will be the last uh, basically pre-recorded episode that I'll put out for the question and answer sessions. But be looking out, guys, when we hit 1,000 subscribers, which is going to be here very, very soon, I will let you guys know when those live streams will be, and we will all jump on together so that I can answer as many questions as possible. But before we jump into today's questions, guys, go ahead and do me a favor. That's right. You know what I'm talking about. Give me that double slap attack, one for that like button, one for that subscribe button. And if you want to be notified anytime a video is dropped on the channel, go ahead and thunder punch that notification bell so that you don't miss a single video. All right, guys, so let's just go ahead and jump into our first question here. We only have two today, uh, just gonna be a shorter video. The first one is coming from Two Canes over on Instagram, not Two Chains, Two Canes. And his question is, do you think purchasing two new condition Charizard GX10s factory sealed is a good investment to go with? I plan on holding them for a bit to see an increase. Well, as you guys probably know from many of my previous videos, I'm a big fan of Hidden Fates. Um, in fact, my distributor should be getting in about 15 tins within the next couple weeks for the Hidden Fates tins reprint and I plan on probably picking up most of them, to be honest. Um, and I know it's like the third reprint, guys. Believe me, I'm aware of that. We all are. Um, but when you're looking at a product like this, I mean, the enormous popularity of Hidden Fate since it was, it was released uh, late last year has really been tremendous. And even with 
you know, three reprints. Not only has the set itself increased in value, but the chase card within that set has also increased in value. And so realistically, when I look at Hidden Fates, um, and especially if you're looking at it from an investment standpoint, yeah, sure. Again, it, when the reprint comes out, it may hurt the overall uh, value of the product in the present moment. But realistically, guys, we're looking 10, 20 years down the road. Now, so long as Pokemon is still a viable business entity um, in 20 years, I truly think that these, these Hidden Fates tins especially are going to be valuable in the future. I, I don't see any reason why if you pick these up now for wh whatever their going price is, I believe they're $19.99 per tin, uh, there is absolutely no reason that in 10 years you would not be able to sell those for a profit. Even if it was just double, even if you sold it for 40 or 50 bucks, you still doubled your value. Now, granted, you have to take into account uh, factors like inflation over the years and things like that, but that's just worst case scenario in my opinion. Well, I guess worst case scenario would be if Pokemon just went out of business, but I honestly don't see that happening either. And a really good, um, a really good um, strategy, I guess you could say, or, or a good rule of thumb that I heard uh, once, and it actually came from um, King Pokemon, AKA Gary from Pawn Stars, is someone had asked him, you know, do you think that if Pokemon were to go out of business today, uh, that these products would be worth anything? And this is somebody that's been around since the very beginning. In fact, he was one of the driving factors that brought Pokemon cards over to the United States from Japan. And he said, when you look at collectibles, uh, specifically trading cards, um, typically what you see is even when that company goes out of business, the popularity of that will continue for at least 10 to 20 years after that particular brand has ended. And if you understand anything, whether, whether it's human beings, whether it's companies, whether it's brands, it, it doesn't matter. It seems like when, the, when that particular entity uh, is no longer there, the popularity of it actually increases pretty tremendously uh, you know, for a period of time. And uh, you know, we see that with musicians that have passed on. We see that with um, companies that have been dissolved. Uh, there's there's this mystique about when something goes away that all of a sudden everybody understands there's no more of it coming out. They will no longer be produced. And so because of that, there is this, as I said, mystique around it and it tends to actually drive up the value. So, you know, with these Hidden Fates tins, long story short, I truly think that 10, 20 years into the future, these are still going to be valuable even though we're seeing a third reprint, um, and even though the population of them may be higher right now, it all boils down to if collectors and investors will actually keep these sealed over that time frame. And if we actually go through a period of time from let's say like 2005 to 2015, really about the 10 year slump in Pokemon, if we have another slump like that, will people actually stick around? Uh, again, this is this is a market, much in the same manner that we have the stock market, bond market, everything like that. What you typically see is that when the market is hot, everybody's jumping in. But as soon as that market slumps, you start to see everyone flee. And it, and realistically, during those slumps is is a really good time to actually invest. In fact, Warren Buffett once said that uh, you should never let a good crisis go to waste. And, uh, and I truly believe in that as well. Uh, you know, if Pokemon does go through another slump, the people who are fickle and are not in it for the long term, um, they will jump ship really quickly. And that is actually, in my opinion, a great time to jump in and actually pick up product um, for a good price. All right, guys, and then our last question here, it comes from Ryan. Uh, he just recently sent this to me over on YouTube. And it says, as someone that is brand new, but a Magic the Gathering vet that wants to collect sealed product, what sets and products would you suggest I focus on for around a $2,000 budget? 
all the various type of packaging that big box retailers have is overwhelming slash confusing. And I'll agree with you on this, Ryan. There is so much product out there that it is hard to navigate. Ching ching, no pun intended. Um, the, the world of Pokemon and, and all of the products that have been released. Um, but something that I want to point out here and something that I've said um, in the past is that there to me is is a big difference between being a collector and an investor so if you're somebody like ryan who is looking to have sealed product for their own personal collection then that is going to be um, vastly different than or a vastly different mindset than what an investor is going to have uh, for investing purposes you're really getting into something to uh, ultimately sell that product sometime in either the near or the far future to garner a profit. Whereas a collector, realistically, you're gonna be holding on to these products, um, you know, maybe for the rest of your life and then maybe passing those down to uh, your children or grandchildren or, or whomever. Um, so I would say, you know, if you're a collector like Ryan, uh, sealed product on a $2,000 budget, you really have to ask yourself, uh, what is it that you enjoy? That's that's the nice part about being a collector versus an investor is that um, you're not really going into it with you know strictly monetary uh, gains in mind. You you know for a collector you're going into it to find something that you truly enjoy because you're going to hold on to it. So the first thing that I would say, Ryan, is find something that you truly enjoy. Um, if it's modern product if it's um, old Wizards of the Coast product, if it's maybe EX era product, uh, find the area that you, you truly enjoy and then focus in on that. And then once you've found that particular niche that you are most interested in, then also look at the product that is available. So if you're going back to Wizards of the Coast era, you for sealed product, you've basically got booster boxes, you've got booster packs, and you've got theme decks. So, you know, find what is most appealing to you within your budget. Now, I'll be honest, on a $2,000 budget, um, booster boxes are gonna be extremely hard to come by. I, I don't know of any booster boxes right now from the Wizards of the Coast era that are going for less than $2,000. And and realistically, if that is your, your you know the top of your budget, I wouldn't necessarily recommend just going out and buying a $2,000 booster box. You know, use the funds that you have and kind of spread it around a, among different collectibles. Now, and this is the thing, guys, everyone's opinion on this is going to be vastly different because it's ultimately what you enjoy. And, and that's the great part about this hobby is that you can get into it for collecting purposes, you can get into it for investing purposes, or you can do both, much in the same manner that I have. Um, I would say that first and foremost, I'm a collector. Um, you know, when I got back into Pokemon, I, I got back in um, into investing because ultimately I wanted to build up enough capital to where I didn't have to worry about going into the hobby uh, from a, an investing mindset. And, and it's been very good to me. You know, I, I've been able to do a lot of things because of my um, investing background in, uh, well, really investing background in general, but investing in Pokemon cards is, it has allotted me other, um, it has allowed me to do other things to allow me to pursue other business endeavors that I might not have had the capital to do otherwise. And by being, you know, intelligent in my investing decisions with Pokemon, it has allowed me to pursue those other areas. And ultimately, you know, my goal is to return back to the point where I'm strictly a collector to where I have, you know, ultimately multiple streams of income that I can utilize portions of that to add Pokemon product to my collection. And, uh, you know, I don't know if that's everyone's end goal, but it is certainly mine. And so you really have to ask yourself, you know, what are you getting into it for? Are you wanting to be strictly a collector, strictly an investor, or maybe a combination of both? And if you're like Ryan and you're wanting to collect product and you have a certain budget, hone in on a, a particular niche, a particular maybe set or era, 
and then find products that fit within that particular budget. So that is gonna do it for today, guys. Thank you for sticking around for this question and answer video. As I said, this will be the last pre-recorded question and answer video that I will put out. Moving on into the future, we will have the live stream Q and A's where I will be able to answer a lot more questions and ultimately be able to interact with everybody in real time and, and ultimately have a good time with the community. And I'm looking forward to it so much and I, I can't wait for us to grow this community to 1000 subscribers and beyond. And again, guys, I just can't tell you how much I appreciate your support. Other than that, I will see you all next time. My name is Pokenav. I'm here to help you navigate the world of Pokemon one video at a time, and I will see you all in the next video.